Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of the Salvation Navy. In the last episode, I mentioned I picked up another boat project and wanted to give you a brief overview of what I picked up as well as the initial assessment of it. In mid-December, I saw a posting on a Facebook page for free boats. Yes, we all know what free boats are. But I took a look at it and was shocked to see this little jewel on the first picture of the list. It's a Harrisoff Eagle, a rather rare boat and very similar to the Harrisoff America. The hull, cabin, and cockpit layout are almost identical, but with a different rigging configuration of a gaff sloop that even has a staysail, jib, and topsail. This boat was abandoned, and several other traditional style sail and motor boats were at a marina in Maryland. They were scheduled for demolition and disposal on January 2nd of this year. With no way to get to Maryland with a trailer to get it on such short notice, I hired Jesse from Honey Badger Hauling to retrieve it and secure it for me. A lot more I'll say about this fellow later, but he really went out of his way to give me a hand and help me out. One difficulty he had was the mast, which would simply not come loose due to various factors, including there being about four inches of solid ice in the bottom of the boat. As I had planned to put a tabernacle mast on it anyway, I had him go ahead and cut the mast off a few inches above the gooseneck. Jesse got it out of there and secured it for me to come pick up sometime in January. I really had planned to do a lot more documentation of the trip, including filming first coming upon it, the work to get it transferred to the trailer, and I even thought about doing a live broadcast of the whole thing. But as the date approached, getting there and back as fast as possible became the top priority. A major blizzard was forecast to come in that same weekend. Forecasts were showing it to come in late Saturday into Sunday, and I calculated I would be back in Ohio by then. But keeping an eye on the weather, we left Friday morning and headed for Maryland. As we got closer, the warnings and alerts started rolling in about how bad this storm was and how it was showing up a little earlier than predicted, of course. Heading to a little tributary of the Chesapeake Bay, we needed to really hustle to complete the transfer, secure the boat, and get it back home before the blizzard hit. Regrettably, I just didn't have that much time for filming. It took us about an hour just to break up and throw out the several inches of ice that were at the bottom of the boat and get it ready for the transfer. In fact, all I could do was this little cell phone video of floating her off Jesse's trailer and then onto mine. I had the phone in one hand and the stern line for the boat in the other. Eventually I just had to put the phone down because I needed both hands to get the boat loaded. We worked then for another couple of hours to secure the boat to the trailer for the long journey back to Ohio. Sometimes these days it can be hard to find someone who works hard, is honest, and is really going to go out of their way for you. If you have any kind of marine hauling needs, you need to give Jesse a call. He's based out of Dunkirk, Maryland, but if you're anywhere along the eastern seaboard, he can come and get you well taken care of. I'll put a link and contact information for him down in the show notes. We left Maryland and made good headway until about the Maryland-West Virginia-Pennsylvania border. Then the snow started moving in and it got really slick really fast. Going down the mountains in Pennsylvania, trying to slowly brake for turns and other vehicles, my friend Skip remarked that uh, she's not answering her helm. So we pulled off at the next exit, got the last two available rooms at the hotel, and miraculously pulled my van and the boat up several steep roads and driveways into the hotel and bedded her down for the night to wait the storm out. Hey, any port in a storm. But it didn't escape me about how absurd this probably all looked. It reminded me something out of a Coen Brothers movie or a clip from the Werner Herzog movie Fitzcarraldo about the impossible task of bringing a ship over the mountains. Good movie, by the way. Check it out. Check. After we waited out the storm the next day, the last few hours of driving back to Ohio were no problem. I got the boat settled into a temporary location for storage until weather permits me to bring it back to my backyard boatyard. I wanted to do a quick overview of the boat, 
look over its condition and get a little better look at it than what I was able to do when I first picked it up. I also wanted to be able to take off any parts that needed to be protected as soon as possible. At first glance, I'm amazed at how good a condition it is. It's a mess and it's going to need a lot of work, but it's sturdy, solid, and it's not going to need some of the work that my Harris Off America did. Off the bat, I can see that the woodwork on the whole thing is going to need to be refinished and even restored in a few places. Unprotected exposure for a long time has taken its toll on the wood, but most of it as far as I can see is in good material shape. I was amazed and thrilled to see that this boat had the rather rare lantern running lights package, and they had not been stolen or missing and were in fact in almost perfect condition. There's not so much as a scratch or crack on the lenses, and I removed these lanterns right away for safekeeping until restoration was complete. These are going to look so great back on the restored boat. Something else that amazed me was the state of the cockpit sole. My Harris Off America, along with every other hull of these boats that I've ever seen, has been rotten and in need of replacement. Except this one. Even with being exposed to the elements for years, and a lot of water and ice in the bottom, presumably for multiple years in a row, I'm amazed to say that the cockpit sole, the cabin sole, and the cabin house deck are solid as a rock. I really can't figure out how that is the case, and I'll look at that in greater detail, but that's a welcome surprise. As you can see, the entire seat for the starboard side is gone. The combing that curves under to form the foundation for the seats has a plywood core, and that's rotted away, just like my America did. So that'll need to be replaced. All the teak on the starboard side is gone, but the wood and the seats on the port side are mostly there except for the lazarette hatch cover. So I will need to remake all of those. I'm hoping I can save the wood from the seats that's still there, but we'll have to see what condition it is once I get it out of the weather and back into my shop. The handrails on top of the cabin house are gone, but I'm not sure I'm going to put those back anyway. I'll have to wait and see. Luckily the attached deck hardware is there, but some of the bronze blocks for halyard and such are missing. I'm also amazed that there are no prolific number of spider and stress cracks in the deck. There are some major issues around the chain plates, but I can fix those. Otherwise, I'm hard pressed to find a lot of stress cracks and spider cracks that plague these other boats, including My America, which had them extensively. Why a boat left to the weather has fewer of these cracks than the one I bought that was under wraps on the winter and well taken care of, I've not yet figured out. I really love the detail someone spent time doing for this boat, like the decorative rope work for the self tacking jib traveler. That's something I'll be restoring as well. Guess I better get my knot books out. The bowsprit will need to be refinished, but the wood is solid and can be restored. That's going to look really amazing when it's done. The cabin interior is certainly a mess, but again, it's solid. A power washer in warmer weather will do a lot of good here. The mast for this boat comes through the cabin and steps into the keel. Not really sure how they mounted it, but the connection point is below the cabin sole, so I can't get in there to see it any clearer. The ice in there doesn't help either. We'll have to tackle that later. The centerboard trunk is gone and someone routed out the top of it, presumably for access to the centerboard. The centerboard looks pretty rusted, but it is intact and the winching mechanism is still there. So I'll do a better evaluation of that at a later date as well. Here's another nice surprise with some good news and some bad news. The good news is that the companionway doors were still there, stored down in the cabin, and are in need of restoration but in overall good shape. Not structurally distressed, broken, splintered, or falling apart at all. That's pretty amazing. The bad news is that the bronze hinges that are unique to these Harris Off America and Eagle boats were gone from the doors. Someone likely took them off for scrap or salvage. It looks like someone tried to take the other part of the hinges that are on the cabin but couldn't figure out where the screws were. Somebody likely grabbed the hinge pin with a pair of pliers tried to tear it off and the pin broke instead. They probably gave up at that point. These hinges are impossible to find out there to buy so I'm going to need to remake those. I'm already watching YouTube videos on how to make your own metal castings at home. Should be fun. The rudder is a complete loss. I'm going to have to remake it from scratch, but it's not really that big of a deal. 
The outside fiberglass envelope has been cracked wide open and water and ice have destroyed it from the inside out. But I can use this one as a pattern and use the hardware off of it. Here's another really pleasant surprise. Jesse told me that when he moved the boat that there was no sign of a wheel. Considering the other bronze that was already taken off the boat, I was sure that this extremely expensive and impossible to come by bronze steering quadrant was long gone. But to my surprise, it's still there. This one uses a chain, cables, and pulleys to direct the quadrant, but it's there in fine shape. I took it off immediately as well for safe storage. That's a huge fine and it'll save me a lot of headache and money instead of having to replace or re-engineer that. The keel skeg extension for the rudder is, well, I'm not sure what shape it's in. It looks okay, a little weathered, but it's wrapped up in fiberglass tape. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but I'll take it off when weather permits and get a better look at it. The Harrisoff Eagles have a little hand-carved figurehead of an eagle on the bowsprit. This one is still looking intact and in good shape. It's going to need to be refinished and repainted, but I'm really looking forward to having that back to its former glory. The entire boat is going to need new rigging, which is missing except for the mast, stays, and the chain that goes from the bow to the bowsprit. I'll need a new set of sails and spars for it, but that's all doable. There's more I'll be telling you about this boat once I get a better look at it and clean it up when weather breaks a bit. But I wanted to show you a little bit about it and what's going to be coming up for another project. Thanks for watching and I'll be back with another episode as soon as I can.